Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and we're in Vegas Pro 17 for the moment, but we're going to be in Vegas Effect because today I got a Vegas Effect tutorial for you. This is a simple one, just a quick one, and it's a lot of fun to do where you add a fake gunshot, right? So this is not a real gun. This is a fake gun, and I'm indoors, and I want to make it shock everybody and have it suddenly fire as if it was a real gun. We're going to talk about how to make a fake gunshot effect, including adding a muzzle blast in Vegas Effect. So the first thing to do is we need to start with the muzzle blast. So go ahead and right click on your clip once you have the, the moment where you're firing the gun isolated. You can hit edit in Vegas Effect. So now that we're in Vegas Effect, you can zoom in on your timeline right here with this little mountain button. So I'm going to drag this up to make this timeline bigger and I'm going to scrub through to find the point where I fire. So when I start raising the gun up, I'm going to go frame by frame. So the moment I squeeze the trigger, I'm aiming. There we go. So let's go back. Boom. That's the moment it needs to start. The muzzle blast needs to start. So now that I know, well, I'm going to go here and go into effects and just type in gunshot or sorry gunfire. We're looking for specifically for the gunfire effect, not the gun smoke effect. That is a different tutorial. So with the gunfire effect, we're going to drag it onto the timeline here, and it's going to be underneath your media. Just simply drag it on top, because that makes sense, right? It's the media on top. That's what you need to be seeing. There we go. You should be able to see a little spark like so. So we want it to start right here on this frame where we squeeze the trigger. So right here, as soon as I have the trigger being squeezed, I'm going to grab this little double arrow on this track and roll it back to that moment when it hits the marker on the timeline. And then I'm going to go through about three frames, really two frames, and I'm going to roll this one back, so I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit so I can see the end of it here. Well, that's actually, it goes on forever. So let's just cut it off with this little knife tool here, delete this stupid extra bit, and then scroll that down to the marker again. So now when we zoom in, we can zoom in right here on these couple of frames. These are the couple of frames that matter. There's no reason to motion track this or anything. That's more trouble than it's worth. All we're doing is putting this muzzle blast in front of the gun for just two frames. So if you ever accidentally grab that, just hit Control Z. So make sure that you have this gunfire selected, this top track, and then you can move it with these arrows. You can move it in three dimensions in space. Your Y axis, this is your X axis, and this is your Z axis. So first select this top track here so you can actually move and rotate your fire and put it right there on the end of your gun and you can rotate it to hit the right direction and also notice that it's it's not it's a little too flat right we need it to actually kind of poke towards the screen because the the barrel of the gun is going towards the screen so we're actually going to grab see how you can kind of rotate it not only can you rotate you can actually rotate its angle as well in space so you can kind of make it to where you can rotate any of these axes See, I kind of got it a little off now. There we go. And I kind of want the point of the fire to line up with the point of the gun, both in going towards the screen and with this kind of just parallel line right here. So I think that's just about right. We could probably tweak it down just a little. So once you got the muzzle blast position like you like it, go hit this drop down arrow for the transforms for the gunfire track and then you're going to want to keyframe a couple of things you're going to want to keyframe the position scale and orientation and for this top one that's exactly where we want it and then when we scroll to the next one you can actually move it up over in space with the proper rotations can even kind of rotate the fire to move with it and now this final one is going to be gone so when we scroll through you can see it starts moves leaves 
and that's all because we just did a little bit of keyframing right here. You can see there's no keyframe created for the scale because we didn't change the scale. However, you will need to change the scale if your effect has the gun moving closer to the frame or further from the frame in any kind of significant manner. Mine's going to be covered up by the fact that one, it doesn't move significantly, and two, I'm going to explain the next step right here. So the next thing you want to keyframe, starting at this first frame here, is opacity. When you start the keyframe, when you start the keyframing as soon as you hit this radial dial, you're going to want to start it at 90%. Something, because fire is see-through, right? And that's part of your job as compositing, is making this believable. And fire is see-through. So you make it 90%, and now you got a big, bright, but see-through fire. And then when you go to the second frame here, you can actually drop it down to like something really, really minimal, like 56%, 60%, something like that. And then you can see if you if you select off of the transform, you can kind of see your good work here. We actually got a pretty believable fire effect right there. Bam, bam, bam. And so really that's all I want to add. You can even you can even if you don't want this effect to come off so strong, you can even start with a weaker muzzle blast if you would like. Just depends on the cartooniness of your effect or the realism you're going for. And we can also change the color of it as well. When you go to the appearance, we can uh, radial dial in the color and let's make this more of a white. I want it to be kind of white and see-through a little bit, so I'm going to kind of find somewhere down here in the gradient towards white and orange. And find something that looks a little bit more like a flash that kind of color matches where we are in life. And I'm going to leave that color throughout the uh, entire thing. I don't care if it changes color because I'm already losing opacity. So we're going to make sure that still looks good. Boom. There we go. I like that a lot. So now when you go File and Save, you can notice it will populate over here in Vegas in just a second. But one thing I want to do is just add a little bit of like an exposure trip to the camera. Something to kind of jar the senses just a little bit. So um, this is just a little trick that you can do anytime you want to kind of fake an exposure blast. We're just going to grab one flame... We're just going to grab one frame of white right here, and we're going to put that frame as soon as I do it. Let's see, as soon as I squeeze the trigger, there it is. And I want this to be. I'm going to lower the opacity by grabbing this middle knob right here on the the solid color I've grabbed, and just have it kind of barely flash the screen. That way it gives a little bit more of a pop to it. And so the final thing I'm going to do is grab my gunshot actual effect here, my sound effect. Now this is the most important part. The most important part of any kind of visual effect is the sound effect because what really sells it is if it sounds real. So I'm actually going to hit this ignore event groupings and cut out the sound of that part right there. So you don't hear the gun click like that, like it's a little Nintendo gun click sound that you were hearing. And here we can arrow through right here and see when we line up the very, very beginning of the gunshot with that frame, you'll hear it as soon as you see it, and it will really help with the believability of it. For me, I'm going to cut off the rest of this effect that I'm not using. Actually, I'm going to pre-render it so we can see the full effect together. So if you want it to sound closer, which that sounds mid-range, like it was kind of, you know, 30 yards from you kind of gunshot, we need something that sounds like it happened right in your ear. So you can do this, you can do this the same thing right here by clicking on this clip itself, but I'm going to do it on the track itself because this is going to be my SFX track where I've got only this on it. So I'm going to go to track effects, 
and like it's just this just a track EQ right here and I'm going to raise the bass on it let's hear how that sounds much better it peaks right here at four nine so on the left track so we're gonna just drop this 5 DB because I want it to come near the top I want it to sound loud but I don't want it to peak this has been a tutorial for Vegas Effects. If you're looking for more, I've got more coming. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.